Welcome to the first video um, for topic six, automated and emerging technologies. We're gonna be looking at automated systems. And this is for the IGCSE computer science course from Cambridge. You can see here, this topic is broken down into three parts, automated systems, robotics, and artificial intelligence. So first of all, what is an automated system? This is what we're gonna be looking at. Um, you can see here we're, we're at the Tesla factory. Okay, and there's lots and lots of robots, these things in red. Automated systems can be described as a combination of software and hardware, for example, sensors, microprocessors, and actuators that are designed and programmed to work automatically without the need for any human intervention, such as self-driving trains. However, these systems usually involve some kind of human monitoring. Where might we find automated systems? In industry, for our monitoring weather, in transport, we've just seen with the Tesla factory, agriculture, lighting, science, and in gaming. What we need to remember, this came about from the hardware section when we're looking at sensors and burglar alarms and various things, but three things we need to look at, sensors, microprocessors, and actuators. A sensor, of course, is something, an input device that takes readings from the environment and its surroundings and sends this data back to the microprocessor. The data is usually converted into a digital format by an ADC, an analog to digital converter. We've got the microprocessor, which does all the processing of the data collected from the sensors. And we've got actuators, which move things about, generally motors and things that control an object. If something needs to be done, i.e. we're in a greenhouse and it is too hot in the greenhouse, um, the microprocessor, the sensor picks up on the temperature, the microprocessors will tell the actuator to open the windows and a motor will drive an arm which will open the windows. We're going to look at some real world applications and the first one being the manufacturing of painkillers, paracetamol. Okay, we've got some tablets here that need to be manufactured. But how does this work? Well, if we look at this diagram down here, we've got two processes going on. Process one is the mixing of the ingredients of the paracetamol powder, okay, with the powder that's gonna go into these tablets. And, number, and process two is the making of these solid tablets. Obviously, the automated system depends on sensors, a computer, actuators, and software. Both processes are monitored by a number of sensors that send their data back to the central computer system. Any necessary action is taken by the computer, sending signals to appropriate actuators, such as operation pumps, valves, heaters, steerers, and pistons, to ensure both processes can operate without any human intervention. The computer consults its database to ensure both processes are, are operating within correct parameters. Finally, this system uses a remote monitoring station manned by an operator to make sure everything's okay. An overall final check. This system is fully automated. Okay, so what's the advantage of using automated systems for this particular industry? Well, it's much faster than humans um, in taking any necessary action. It's much safer. An automated system is more likely to make correct interventions than a human if necessary, and it's also, it also keeps humans away from potential dangerous environments. The process is much more likely to run under optimum conditions, since any changes needed can be identified very quickly and actions can be taken. Long term, it is less expensive. There's no labor force you've got to pay for year on year. It's a more efficient use of materials. There should be higher productivity, and there should be more consistent results. But the disadvantage is, it is expensive to set up in the first place and needs considerable testing. It's always possible for a set of conditions to occur that were never considered during testing, which could have safety implications, hence the need for the monitoring station. Automated systems usually always need enhanced specialist maintenance, which can be expensive. And if it's computerized, if it's on the internet, it's generally it's, it's prone, it's, it's susceptible to cyber attacks any kind of hacking into that system. Industry two, we're gonna look at a fizzy drinks factory, a little bit like the one in the Ed Norton Incredible Hulk factory where some of his blood got into one of the bottles. We've got um, a diagram with the ingredients that goes into a mixer, stirred round, then goes into bottling and CS gas is added because it's fizzy. The cap is screwed on tight, the, it is labeled and it's all being controlled from a central computer system, okay? 
this company being described manufacturer as fizzy drinks just said that that are bottled and labeled the sensors that are used to ensure the correct amount of each ingredient is added we don't want too much of one particular thing a stirrer is activated um, whenever ingredients has been added to make sure it's all mixed together the bottling plant is again monitored by sensors to ensure the correct amount of drink is added to each bottle and that the right amount of carbon dioxide gas is added to each bottle also the whole process is computer controlled and is totally automatic okay now a couple of questions describe how the sensors actuators and the central computer would be used to monitor and control this bottling plant automatically and finally describe the advantages and disadvantages of fully automating this fizzy drinks factory okay so number one describe how the sensors actuators and um, central computer would be used to monitor and control this plant well sensors are needed to detect the presence of a bottle first of all if there's no bottle there the liquid will be all over the floor level sensors in mixing tanks to ensure the required volume is maintained other sensors might be needed such as temperature and pH um, to see what's going into the bottles and the bottles will arrive at the bottling station here we go so sensors send data back to the central computer continuously if a bottle is present the computer sends um, signals to the actuator to open a valve to allow the liquid to fill the bottle level sensors are used to check the correct amount of liquid is added once a level sensor indicates bottle is full a signal is sent to the computer which then sends a signal to the actuator to close the valve to stop putting liquid into the bottle computer sends signals to actuator to open the valve and add measured amount of carbon dioxide gas after two seconds the valve gas valve is closed and the next the empty bottles arrive and the process continues it's a continuous process Bottle now moves to the capping station. Again, sensors detect bottles and computers send signals to robot arm to place a cap on the bottle and tighten the arm and then the bottle moves on and another cap is fitted to the next bottle. And finally, the bottle moves on to the labeling station where the bottle is rotated through 30, 360 degrees and a label is added with adhesive, with glue. Again, the whole process is continuous. Okay, it can run for 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Advantages, faster than a human operator to take necessary actions. I've said this before with the previous task. More consistent, each bottle will have the exact amount of liquid and the, the exact amount of ingredients in that liquid. It's less expensive over time as it can replace most of the workforce and it can run for 24 hours a day. There's less wastage and more efficient use of materials. There's higher productivity. But, as before the disadvantages, it is expensive to set up. It needs considerable testing. Uh, possible for a set of conditions to occur um, which weren't picked up during testing. Automate, automated systems always need enhanced maintenance. It can be expensive and the computer system is prone to cyber attacks. I think you will find that these advantages and disadvantages work for all of the um, automated systems that we're going to be covering. Finally, we're going to move on to weather and a weather station. There's a guy here on top of a mountain, a completely remote area in the middle of nowhere, maybe in the North Pole. Okay, and here is our weather station with lots and lots of different sensors. So, automated weather stations are designed to gather information from remote regions where people don't really want to be, where they don't, certainly don't want to live, or where constant weather data is being is required. These automated weather stations require a microprocessor, as always, storage, a database, um, battery, usually with a solar powered charger, here we go, and a range of sensors. So the information collected from the, each of these sensors is sent to the microprocessor, okay? Any calculations? are then done, for example, calculating the hours of daylight, the amount of rainfall and the wind direction. The data from the sensors is, cal is calculated and the values are stored on a central database. These can be new figures can be um, also compared with the figures on the central database. Some automated weather stations are sited near airports where reports are sent out automatically every five minutes to pilots in the vicinity of the airport. The only part of the weather station that might need to use actuators is the tipping bucket 
the, the rain gauge. At a preset time interval, the microprocessor sends a signal to the actuator which tips a bucket that has been collecting rainwater. The water is tipped into a vessel where level sensors are then used to measure the amount of rainfall that fell during the required interval. So in summary, just to summarize everything, the automated systems, automated systems lead to less consistent results or less consistent products. Is that true or false? Obviously that is false. Automated systems are more expensive to set up than traditional manual systems. We've talked about this and this is true. Automated systems would be quickly overwhelmed by the amount of data presented to it. Again, false. Automated systems are inherently less safe than manual systems. That's false. Automated systems generally require an enhanced maintenance when compared to manual systems would be true. The automated systems allow processes to run at optimum conditions all the time is true and software failures due to unforeseen conditions are likely to impact on an automated system that is false automated systems will react more quickly to unusual process conditions this is true that is it for this first video in this sixth chapter i hope you enjoyed it please hit the subscribe and notifications and i will see you next time for video two thank you very much indeed bye for now